understand that writing the exams is one part of CA syllabus. The other part is choosing a place for your article sheet. Now students who have cleared IPCC exam or who are from the direct entry scheme have this big question whether they should do it from a small firm, medium size or a big four or after two years go for industrial training. So in your opinion, how should they make this decision? As I think that uh, every article ship form has its own pros and cons. For example, if one uh, works in big four firms, then they will be in only one department. They have to work in only one department for the rest of their article ship period of three years. Right. So this will uh, not uh, diversify their knowledge. Okay. While if they work for a small and medium firm, though the exposure in terms of traveling to areas and the kind of companies they will get, it might be less for as comparison to big four firms. But the diversity of knowledge, the diversity of experience for working in different kinds of audits, whether it be bank audit or private company, public company or any other NGO audit, that diversity will be very much right. or in various departments like taxes and all. So I think that uh, uh, they should choose their article ship decision based on these considerations. Okay. It's not that if they work for uh, they will work for big four then it will be very uh, means it they will get very much uh, to learn from them because they will be doing the same work for the rest of uh, the article ship period. Right. So they will get a good name uh, of a uh, firm or right. their firm. Right. So uh, it I believe that it depends upon a person what they want if they want to learn. Okay. If they want to acquire more and more knowledge, then they should, for example, if they want to practice after their chartered mm -hmm. accountancy, then it is advisable to work in any medium or small firm and learn. Okay. While if they want to go for corporate jobs, and uh, then they, that's why they want a good uh, name behind them for mm -hmm. article ship, they should, they might go for big four. Okay, so basically, when you're deciding on article ship, you should have a foresight of what you want to do after you qualify. Yes. So if you want to go for practice then you might take the decision of going in a medium or a small firm or if you want a corporate job then going for a big four makes sense yes okay thank you uh, the next question is that what is your tip for students who face problems with the practical subjects say for example fm costing accountancy there are a lot of students who can do theory very well but face problems in the practical problem so what is your opinion or what is your advice to them? I believe that the solution to this problem is only to practice, right. nothing else. Because the more you practice, the more perfection will attain in numerical. Okay. So basically what you are saying is every day should they practice practical subjects? Uh, no, but uh, at least as I said that at least they should go through the whole syllabus three to four times. Mm -hmm. this, will, uh, in, this will ultimately bring perfection for numerical. The problem is the numerical subjects are very bulky. Right. So they have to give more time to them. Right. As comparison to theory subjects. Right. But if they will revise it three times, it will, uh, on its own, it will bring uh, that uh, accuracy in their answer right there. Right. So there are students who go to coaching class. Hmm. Now, after the coaching class is ended, or even with coaching classes, if they're practicing, hmm. when they come home, should they write each and every question, solve it step by step, or do some shortcuts? Definitely, they should solve it step by step, because I also okay. used to do the same thing after coming from coaching. Hmm. I used to revise what the coaching uh, class has done on that day. Okay. And I used to rewrite the answer. So okay. that's what, that that will help uh, them to revise because our mind is in, our mind is programmed in such a manner that if we won't do it again immediately we will we are tend to forget it right. because uh, the next time we will test that subject it might be after ten to fifteen days right, right. at that time we won't be able to remember thing that's why I used to do it immediately so even when you are in coaching it is very important for you to do daily study yes not starting three months before the exam right that is the general thing what students do is they go to coaching go for article ship come home sit back relax again the same routine without any revision so is it a mistake that they are doing by not revising every day what is done in the coaching class yeah i believe that's a societal thing <laughs> that will be societal right so if you open your books directly in december so of course they will feel left out or there will be a lot of backlog okay 
Now the next question. So then there are other set of people who are comfortable with practical but face a challenge with theory subjects. Yes. Say audit, law, IT, SM. Even taxation could be termed as theory or practical in some cases. So how do we cope up with those subjects? I think that uh, in theory subjects for getting good marks, we should uh, try to learn the key certain keywords. Okay. For example, if we are uh, reading a section, then in every section there are certain keywords which we should remember. Okay. We don't have to remember each line related to a section, but at least the crux of that se section. Right. Similarly, in any subject, for example, in ITSM, if we rely totally on the uh, keywords, we should, for example, for every uh, concept. If we remember the definition at least word by word, mm -hmm. that will help fetch us marks because in the uh, marking scheme of the institute, they take words directly from the uh, institute's material. Right. So, uh, for example, uh, for example, in ITSM paper, mm -hmm. they uh, the institute's answer key is totally based upon uh, the material which is they provide reading material. Right. So the thing is, the examiner in fact uh, might not be aware much about ITSM as a subject. Mm -hmm. So they will totally rely on the marking scheme word by word. Okay. So remember these keywords will definitely help them score good marks. And uh, even if uh, not uh, uh, about examination, for even remembering them to use in their during the, that knowledge during the article ship, mm -hmm. what I believe is that if we read that section and understand and try to analyze in which practical aspect will it be used, then right. it will be very helpful and it will automatically be programmed in our mind. Right. So basically, if you understand a section, you will be able to write it in exam naturally. Yes. Rather than rote learning of any of the sections. Now, since you mentioned reading or, you know, remembering keywords, is it important to highlight those keywords when you write it in your exam paper? I don't think so. Because uh, it will be better if we do it. Okay. But in examination, we don't get that much time because we have to write a lot. Right. So, but I will recommend them that, for example, if they have some keywords, then they should re uh, write it in the beginning of the their answer. Okay. For example, if we write it, if we have to write about a concept, then we should start with a definition rather than anything else. Right. So this will uh, automatically the examiner will see that definition first, and when he will see or he or she will see that uh, he has written the sentence he knows that concept right. they will automatically give the marks okay so if you don't have time to highlight the keywords at least to make sure that you are writing those keywords in the beginning so that the examiner sees it and automatically it fetches you marks yes right so now after having a general discussion over the subjects let's dive deeper into two main subjects which create problems for ca students one of course is itsm which is the cause of failure in group 2 for maximum IPCC students. Yes. Now, could you just let us know in finer detail how to prepare for this subject and how to face this subject in the examination so that you ensure that you clear? Uh, for ITSM, what I think that uh, we have to uh, go only for institute's material because okay. what I have seen that generally we go for a certain private books that in I think that that won't uh, fetch them marks because of it students don't get marks because in IT uh, for example in information technology paper the thing uh, the answers are directly from institute's material what we do is that we try to form our own answers right. and this creates problem because uh, it's a bitter truth that neither CA students nor CA examiners know much about information technology. Right, right. So as a result of this, the examiner, if the examiner can't connect with whatever you are writing with the marking scheme, they won't give you marks. Right. And that's what I believe is the main reason why ITSM is such a, considered such a tough subject. Right. While frankly speaking, it's not. Right. So do you recommend preparing notes for this subject, like your own handwritten notes? Is it recommended? That will be better. Okay. Now, just a small tip on how to make notes for ITSM. Just the bullet points or writing sentences would help? Uh, Making it in a question answer format or just concept wise? Concept wise in a bullet uh, form because okay. that will be concise. Right. So, writing it in a question answer format is not advisable because... It will take time. It will take time. Right. 
Now the next problem subject these days is audit. Mm. People often come out of the exam hall being very happy that you know audit paper was really nice and easy. But when they see their results, the marks say something else. They have not scored as much as they had expected in the paper of auditing and assurance at both the levels, IPCC as well as CA final. What do you think is the main reason for this, you know, difference in the expectation and reality? The first thing which I believe is the reason is the uh, is fact that the uh, institute also does not give much marks in this paper. <laughs> because if we see the trends, the highest marks are very less in this paper. <laughs> Secondly, what I believe uh, that the students make mistake uh, is that they don't, uh, either they quote wrong section or quote wrong standard or not it or they can't uh, uh, connect their answer with the right standard or not it because okay. Uh, for example, there is a concept. In that concept, certain good amount of essays will be there, which mm-hmm. will be connected to them. It might happen in the in the marking marking scheme there are two or three essays which uh, which are uh, related to that concept, but we only write one or we write none. Okay. So that won't uh, that might hamper our marks. While mm-hmm. we think that we have written one essay, we have we could link it that with one essay. It might mm-hmm. be that two three essays are connected with that. Right. So basically, when people are studying auditing, they are studying each essay separately. Yes. They are not connecting the essays and writing answers. So that is one main problem in scoring. So now it is a general belief that you know students are not scoring because they are writing in their own words. How far is this true? Like, is it important to write some uh, specific phrases in order? Or is it okay to write in your own words? Whenever we start answer, I will. Uh, I recommend and I also do that thing that I used to write word by word the same thing which was written uh, in that essay. Okay. Because two, but only two three sentences. The rest I used to write on my own. Okay. But that two three sentences in the beginning, beginning, as I said, in theory paper that will help. Okay. The problem with the students is that whenever they write the essay. Either they don't write the whole sentence, the exact sentence, or they miss the some of their own words in that sentence. Right. So that uh, rather than helping will do more harm. Right. So that's one of the problem. Okay. How how to write? If you write, you write word by word, mm-hmm. exact answer, or you don't write. Right. You write okay. the normal definition. Yeah. So basically, when a writing a standard, it has to be as per the proper standards ka wording. Hmm. You cannot modify the wording because it is a standard. We can't make our own standard. Yeah, you cannot make your own standard which is the common mistake done by students. Yes. Right. 